Recently, Russian media have suggested that in the near future, plans plans to enhance the combat capabilities of its armed forces, including the introduction of new weapons. According to some sources, Russia will increase its annual military budget from 3 to 7 percent until 2020, and the tank brigades are considered the backbone of the world. Currently, there are about 892 tanks in service with the Polish Army, the fourth largest tank team in the NATO forces after the US, Turkey, and Greece. All of them are third generation tanks. In addition, Poland is currently the early European Union member developing a new generation main battle tank called the PL01. As a product of the cooperation between Oprom and BAE Systems, the PL01 tank is advertised as the world's first steel tank with superior features compared to super tanks of USA or Russia. The PL01 tank project was silently researched and developed by Polish Army for a long time and very secretly. Almost all information about this project was not disclosed to the public until the Polish Army officially introduced a real monitor of PL01 tank at the International Defense Industry Exhibition in Kiels on September 2, 2013. This tank was armed to meet a possible Polish Army requirement. Some sources even reported that this tank could enter service in 2018. However, at this time, it has not happened, and this tank is still just a police technology demonstrator. The design of the PL-01 is unlike any tank ever introduced in the world, and this can be considered as a starting point for the new generation of tanks of mankind. According to its manufacturer, the PL-01 tank is considered to be the fifth generation MBT because the advanced steel features protecting it from electronic detection are found on no other MBT. That plus other advanced features such as an unmanned turret. In comparison, the US M1A2 Abrams and the Chinese Type 99 are classified as third generation MBTs. Russia's T-14 Armata is classified as either a third generation or fourth generation tank. The PL-01 chassis is based on the Swedish Combat Vehicle 90. It also shares some similarities with the Anders light tank, which is based on the same platform. Weight of the PL-01 tank is claimed to be 35 tons. The layout of the PL-01 is similar to those of modern standard main battle tanks. The tank will be manned by a three-man crew. The driver is located at the front of the vehicle's hull with the commander and gunner also located in the hull and the unmanned turret mounted in the rear. In addition, there is a rear compartment in the hull which can accommodate four soldiers. At the heart of the PL-01's capabilities is its sterile technology. PL-01 is covered with special temperature-controlled wafers allowing it to blend with the infrared signature of its surroundings. This makes the tank invisible to infrared sensors. The vast majority of targeting sensors on the battlefield today rely on the infrared band of the electromagnetic spectrum to do their beating. The PL-01 attempts its almost magical infrared signature reduction via the installation of temperature-controlled wafers that blanket the exterior. These chameleon skins of source allows the tank skin to match the infrared signature of its surroundings. It does this by processing what small infrared sensors mounted around the tank detect, and then display a pattern on the tank's honeycomb light covering that best matches the infrared data collected. And, more amazingly, these hexagon shaped wafers can be manipulated to make the tank look like a smaller object such as a car. The PL-01 also lowers its infrared signature through cooling and dispersing the exhaust from its diesel engine. The PL-01 tank is also said to be almost entirely coated with radar-observing material, and the vehicle's very low profile and faceted design is said to reduce radar returns in a resizable manner.
It was planned that the new playlist tank will have modular protection with Mantara layer ceramic aramid armor. Damaged add-on armor modules could be easily replaced in field conditions. Also, newer modules could be fitted once more advanced armor is available. It is claimed that front armor with add-on armor will provide protection against 30 or 40 mm armor piercing rounds. It was planned that all route protection will be against 14.5 mm armor piercing rounds. Such level of protection makes this vehicle closer to modern light tanks than true main battle tanks. It was planned that the hull will have a high level protection against landmines and improvised explosive devices. This tank was designed to withstand explosion equivalent to 10 kg of TNT anywhere under the hull. Automatic fire suppression and NDC protection system would be fitted as standard. The PL-01 will also support active defenses in the form of Fajofi light system, where electronic actively scanned array radars will be installed around the turret. Once a high-speed projectile is detected moving at a threatening vector, the system will fire one of its countermeasure rockets to intercept and then it in front of the incoming projectile, thus killing it or greatly decreasing its kinetic energy before impacting the tank. Also, laser detection sensors will be distributed around the tank so that early warning of an imminent enemy attack could initiate automatic ejection of infrared and laser masking smoke models, which are mounted flush with turret to keep the tank's radar signature low. The primary weapon of the PL-01 will either be a 105mm or 120mm gun fed by an autorotor that ensures a rate of fire of 6 rounds a minute. The gun will fire both conventional anti-tank rounds and anti-tank guided missiles. PL-01 can carry 45 rounds for the main gun, 16 of which are located inside the robot turret with the remainder stored within the hull. The tank is also armed with a 7.62mm caliber UKM-2000C machine gun with 1000 rounds of ammunition. A remote controlled weapon station on the turret can accept a 7.62mm or 12.7mm machine gun or a 40mm automatic grenade launcher. The turret will also house an active protection system to neutralize incoming anti-tank guided missiles or RPGs. Upram revealed, the turret can be changed depending on the type of mission undertaken by the tank. The PR-01 will be equipped with a 940 horsepower diesel engine coupled to a torque converter, automatic gearbox and driving assistance mechanism. The suspension is based on 7 wheels with the driver shafts having active damping of torsion bars mounted on the first and last two pairs. The vehicle can reach speeds of up to 70 km per hour on bare frost and 50 km per hour in rough terrain with a maximum range of 500 km. It can successfully climb an inclination of 30 degrees, cross ditches and changes to a width of 2.6 meters and cross quarter obstacles with a depth of up to 1.5 meters without preparation and up to 5 meters deep with preparation. The PR-01 will be offered in multiple formats, including a command vehicle, an armored repair vehicle, and a mine clearance vehicle. This will allow the forward deployed armor column to work as a single team using common parts to accomplish various tasks. There is also controversy as to what the PL-01 really is. Some media reports describe the futuristic-looking PL-01 as a light tank, while others call it a direct support vehicle. Whatever the case, the PL-01 seems like a fantastic concept, as it takes a modular approach to proven and effective tank design while also incorporating new technologies and signature control capabilities that are very intriguing to say the least. Whatever the product is promoted is extremely impressive. 
we will have to wait and see if Poland and their British friends really revolutionize the tank as we know it. My video of PR01 ends here. Thank you for watching. If you find this video interesting, please give me your thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to support the channel. Goodbye and see you again.